He has contributed magnificently to our understanding of the power of prophecy and how it pertains to the power of the controllers of the planet. Welcome back, Tex. Hey, Jeff Rents, Great to be with you again. Thank you, my friend. And I'm looking at the newest April newsletter, and I just I wear. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I read it. You just nailed this whole Goldman Sachs issue. Goldman Sachs, known by many, and appropriately so, as the fourth branch of the American government. Maybe the dominant branch, because Washington is now Wall Street, and Washington uh, will never be what it was. Wall Street, in fact, is Washington in many ways. So what we've got is Goldman Sachs and its chairman and CEO, Lloyd Blankfein has invoked quite a statement here. Let me just read it to our listeners, then we're going to have you fill in the blanks here. Is it any wonder then, writes Tex Mars, that once, when asked about Goldman Sachs' incredibly lucrative and yet highly controversial actions in stirring the pot of global finance, Mr. Blankfein suddenly retorted, I'm doing God's work. Indeed, he is doing God's work. That is, if we agree with the famed 19th century German Jewish writer and scholar and philosopher Heinrich Hein, who Riley observed, money is the God of the Jews and Rothschild is his prophet. Just a little segment from Texas' latest newsletter, which is always just loaded with uh, more than insightful material. It's, it's, you have to have it. Goldman Sachs is the fourth branch of government. Where do we rank the branches of government, Tex, if we've got four now? And I think that's an, a very valid statement. <laughs> you know, it is. That's a very valid statement. But, but I wonder uh, if, if really, you know, so many people look at whoever is president. We, we've had so many corrupt presidents recently. Uh, George W. Bush and uh, Barack Obama being the most recent. But really, are they our enemy? Because I believe these people are, are stooges, they're puppets, uh, and certainly uh, a man like Lloyd Blankfein, and he himself, of course, uh, is the chief administrative officer, he's chairman, uh, CEO of Goldman Sachs. But I believe he is a lackey for Lord Rothschild uh, and other interests. I've done some incredible research and uh, I'm willing to share it with your audience uh, on the, the actual ownership of Goldman Sachs. Now, oh. a, lot of people, a lot of people have never heard of Goldman Sachs. They've heard of Bank of America uh, or J.P. Morgan, um, Chase Manhattan, or some of the others. But believe me, Goldman Sachs, you are correct. I believe they are, they are bigger than the Kremlin, bigger than the White House, uh, bigger than the Tim Downing Street in terms of international power and authority and I do believe that the Rothschild faction Rothschild has his own bank of course NM Rothschild and Sons in London and there are other branches around the world uh, but uh, Goldman Sachs is indisputably the world's power you know there's a gentleman uh, online and actually it's a pretty good website has a website up called Goldman Sachs 666 hmm. Well, at first mm -hmm. you sort of shake your head and say, is he a religious fanatic? No. No, it's a pretty good sight because, you know, even the, the Holy Scriptures talk about the great uh, use of money by e evildoers. And I think it was the Apostle Paul who said that the love of money is the root of all evil. So this, this money power, you'll recall, and I know you're a great historian, Jeff, that uh, Andrew Jackson uh, was denied the presidency, even though he won uh, the majority of votes the first time. That's right. Uh, and uh, in his inaugural address, when he finally did become president, uh, won an, a landslide the second time, they could not deny it. He said to the bankers, to the uh, Rothschilds, he said, you know, by God, I'm going to rout you out. He called them a bunch of serpents and vipers. Yeah. I, can you imagine a president in his inaugural address calling... Uh, let's say no. the chairman of Goldman Sachs or Rothschild, serpents and vipers, no. and saying, I'm going to rout you out. Which is exactly appropriate and true. The, the bottom line is, and the tragedy of it all is, uh, the President of the United States is, is essentially an insult to the integrity of this country. He is a puppet, uh, or she, if there ever is a she. They're nothing. 
They're figureheads. That's all they are. They don't. That's right. They have no. They have no no power of their own. But how about this statement? I'm doing God's work. Doesn't get any more arrogant than that, does it? Now, Now you have to. First of all, if he is doing God's work, let's see what God's work is. Yep. <laughs> now, now I, I want people to understand something, that uh, do, do, it has now come out that most of the so-called credit swaps or derivatives that brought down the whole world's economy were minted by none other than Goldman Sachs Bank. Now, you'll also recall, Jeff, that oil two years ago shot up to $147 a barrel and basically broke the back of America's economy. Correct. The price of uh, gasoline the pump went up to almost $4. It's just a shocking straight up. Now, Goldman Sachs had actually told everybody, we're going to raise prices. It's going to raise to at least $250. They got it up to $147, and then Goldman Sachs furiously turned around and began to sell it short. And the price dropped all the way to $32 a barrel last year. And then they turned around and began to buy it back up. Now, the, there is a group called the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. They're similar to the Securities Exchange Commission for stocks, but they're in the commodities business. They're there to protect you and me and the American, and, and well, really almost the whole world, from these commodity speculators and crooks. But it turned out even after they kept denying it, denying it, night, denying it, the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, finally was forced to admit that 80% of all oil futures, okay, in uh-huh. other 80% of the market uh-huh. was controlled by just two firms in the entire world. Wow. One was Goldman Sachs, the yeah. other was Morgan Stanley. Yeah. So when you pay this price at the pump, you can thank Mr. Blank Fine the Jewish multi-billionaire, and you can thank Mr. Rothschild and Goldman Sachs. Uh, By the way, Goldman Sachs, uh, during the Clinton administration, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, Mm -hmm. to make sure they didn't run afoul of United States regulations, they got the the Clinton administration to allow them to open up what I think is a rigged commodity exchange in London called ICE, I-C-E, the mm-hmm. International Commodities Exchange, and this is the, the exchange where they put all of their crummy, uh, manipulative uh, trades through. Now, I want people to understand something. Do you remember when the Enron thing up in the California bonds crisis came uh, up several years ago? Well, Goldman Sachs just happened to be the one that sold the bonds. And then they turned around and sold them short. Recently, the nation of Greece turned out that they had bought credit derivatives and swaps uh, from Goldman Sachs, and then Goldman Sachs turned around and sold them short, and it has broken the back of the entire country of Greece. Right. Coming up coming up is going to be Portugal, uh, Ireland, Italy, Spain, and Goldman Sachs. Now, when Greece recently, the nation of Greece, when they recently almost went bankrupt, they actually let their top treasury person go, and now Goldman Sachs is running the entire treasury and banking system of Greece. Right. They own it. It is is an amazing story of Goldman Sachs. Now, on the other hand, while we have oil that is run by Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, there's another Rothschild branch Mm -hmm. called J.P. Morgan Chase. Mm -hmm. And you know, we now find out, and this is just a couple weeks ago that it's been confirmed, it turns out that just two banks, J.P. Morgan Chase and Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, control the silver and gold market. That's it. That's amazing. The people don't know. They just don't understand. We have J.P. Morgan. We've got Goldman Sachs. We've got the IMF. We'll find out about the IMF now. There's a very interesting tie. I'm pretty sure you've probably seen it, Tex between the utter decapitation of the government of Poland and the International Monetary Fund. And if one wants to be conspiratorial, one has a feast regarding that. We'll talk about that and much more with the inimitable Tex Mars. His newsletter, The Power of Prophecy, is one of the most astute and mind-boggling political 
and geopolitical analysis you can get. Be right back with text. 